Welcome to the culture of healthcare, socio-technical aspects, clinicians, and technology. This is Lecture A. The component, the culture of healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings, including how care is organized within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for socio-technical aspects, clinicians, and technology are to describe the concepts of medical error and patient safety. Discuss error as an individual and as a system problem. Compare and contrast the interaction and interdependence of social and technical resistance to change. Discuss the challenges inherent with adapting work processes to new technology. Discuss the downside of adapting technology to work practices and why this is not desirable. Discuss the impact of changing socio-technical processes on quality, efficiency, and safety. This lecture will discuss medical errors and patient safety. Medical errors are mistakes that occur during medical care. Many of these errors could have been prevented. Patient safety refers to the fact that patients can be harmed as a consequence of errors and they need to be protected against harm during healthcare delivery. Medical ethics emphasizes the concept of primum non no se re, which is Latin for first do no harm. This is one of the fundamental ethical considerations that medical students are taught, and when they take the Hippocratic Oath as new physicians, they promise to do no harm. Reducing medical errors and improving patient safety are core aims of modern medicine. Medical errors have probably existed for as long as patient care and healthcare systems have been around. As far back as 1964, a study reported that 20% of patients admitted to a university hospital medical service suffered iatrogenic injury, which means an injury caused by a medical procedure and that 20% of those injuries were either serious or fatal. As the Institute of Medicine pointed out in 2000 in its report, To Air is Human, Building a Safer Health System, medical errors in the U.S. are estimated to cause between 44,000 and 98,000 unnecessary inpatient deaths annually. One estimate has suggested that there may be as many as 1 million excess injuries each year as a consequence of medical errors. It is reasonable to assume that adverse events occur in all healthcare systems and in all nations. The data suggests that most of these events occur in the hospital or inpatient setting, although researchers are not sure about the incidence of errors in the ambulatory setting because the data for outpatient events is fragmented and incomplete. Adverse events can also occur in other settings, including nursing homes, long-term care facilities, emergency rooms, pharmacies, and even the patient's own home. Developing nations have an increased burden when it comes to medical errors. In addition to the usual reasons for medical errors in developed countries, many developing nations face other significant issues, such as inadequate infrastructure and equipment, an unreliable drug supply and drug quality, and insufficient technical skills of their healthcare workers because of insufficient training. Furthermore, operating costs are often underfinanced. All of these issues contribute to the likelihood of medical errors in healthcare infrastructures in developing countries. There are two fundamentally different types of errors. The first are errors caused by individuals. These may be unintended acts of omission or acts of commission. An example of an unintended act of omission would be when a patient is transferred from one unit of the hospital to another and an important medication is left off the medication list. An example of an unintended act of commission would be when a medication that is intended for one patient is delivered to another patient. Individual errors can also be acts that do not achieve their intended outcomes. 
An example of this would be a misdiagnosis based on an error. The second main type of error is error caused by systems. These errors are a function of the complexity of healthcare and of healthcare technology, the complexity of treating disease, and the dependence of the process of healthcare on a multiplicity of clinicians and interventions. The cause of errors must be identified so that they are not repeated. In the past, the primary focus of inquiry was on the individual who was felt to have committed the mistake and on the mistakes themselves. These investigations reflected the name and blame culture that existed in many healthcare systems, which punished those who committed errors. Instead of this approach, the new focus is now on fixing inadequacies in the system to improve patient safety. The focus on the system allows healthcare providers to perform their tasks in an environment that is optimized to patient care rather than adversarial to the provider. The rationale for this approach is that good people make bad mistakes when they work in bad systems, and it makes much more sense to focus on the system and fix its inherent problems than to place the entire blame on the shoulders of the individual who committed the mistake. Individual errors are also known as slips, and these are unconscious errors. They are usually a glitch when performing repetitive, routine, or complex actions. Slips are usually not thought-based, and they occur when attention is diverted and there is a break in the routine. Attention can be impaired by many factors, including fear, frustration, anger, and fatigue. How can healthcare systems reduce or eliminate individual errors or slips? One answer is to limit the opportunities for loss of attention. For example, sleep deprivation during resident training is associated with an increased incidence of errors. After graduating from medical school, physicians undergo additional specialized training as residents. Residency is a concentrated learning experience in the clinical setting during which residents spend a protracted number of continuous hours delivering patient care. This leads to sleep deprivation and fatigue. The rules about resident training in the United States have been changed to limit the number of duty hours per week allowed for residents in order to reduce slips due to fatigue and sleep deprivation. Other types of individual errors or mistakes are rule-based or knowledge-based. These are errors of conscious thought. Rule-based errors usually occur during problem-solving when the wrong rule is applied. These errors suggest an improper use of expertise. Knowledge-based errors usually occur when the decision-maker confronts a novel situation that he or she has never experienced before. The lack of expertise leads to an incorrect decision or a mistake. Rule-based errors can be addressed by using clinical decision support order sets. These may be incorporated into the electronic health record to provide a layer of safety. Clinical decision support also allows clinicians to avoid bias in clinical reasoning. Knowledge-based errors can be reduced by improving the level of knowledge at the point of care. Knowledge can be embedded in the electronic health record. An example of this is info buttons. When clinicians have questions at specific points in their workflow, they can click on a button on the electronic health record that will display on the screen the level of knowledge that they require to complete their tasks. Knowledge-based errors can also be reduced by fostering a culture of collaboration and consultation. This is typically done by providing care in multidiscipline routines. In contrast to individual errors, system errors occur because of inadequacies within the system that delivers health care. They are often committed by multiple individuals who intersect while providing patient care within the same setting. They may occur at the same point of an individual workflow, but may be committed by different clinicians. These errors are often difficult to analyze. An example of system errors are medication errors. 
It has been estimated that unintended changes in medications occur in about one-third of all patients at the time of transfer from one unit of a hospital to another. About 14% of patients have unintended changes in their medications when they are discharged from the hospital. And more than half of all patients have at least one unintended medication discrepancy at hospital admission. Medication errors are therefore an enormous problem. How can healthcare systems reduce medication errors? One method is to implement a system of medication reconciliation, which is a process of avoiding unintended changes in medications across transitions in care. Medication reconciliation requires repeated reviews of a patient's medications at the time of admission, at the time of transfer, and at the time of discharge. Many different methods have been suggested for medication reconciliation to reduce medication errors. One method recommends that only pharmacists be allowed to order medications in the inpatient setting. Another method links the medication reconciliation process to computerized physician order entry, or CPOE. A third method integrates medication reconciliation within the user interface as a function of the electronic health record. Yet another suggestion is that the onus of medication reconciliation should be removed from clinicians and put in the hands of patients themselves. In other words, patients should reconcile their medications instead of clinicians. Evidence suggests that medication reconciliation reduces errors, but there is not yet adequate data that indicates that medication reconciliation improves outcomes. This lecture has shown that patient safety is important and that individuals and systems need to reduce or eliminate errors in the inpatient and outpatient settings and across the spectrum of healthcare. Several entities are driving patient safety initiatives. Clinicians have taken a major role in providing safer healthcare, and so have hospitals. Regulatory bodies such as the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations, or JCO, have been instrumental in hospitals' patient safety initiatives. It is also interesting to see that patients themselves have taken over some aspects of patient safety as a consumer phenomenon. This concludes Lecture A of Sociotechnical Aspects, Clinicians, and Technology. In summary, this lecture focused on medical errors and patient safety. Define these terms. Looked at issues facing the U.S. as well as developing nations. Distinguished slips from mistakes. Discussed the concept of system errors with examples. And examined the driving forces behind patient safety initiatives.